Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Hopefully a quick video, you know how I am. Anyway, so I've got a copy of Sonic 3 running on an original Model 1 Genesis, hooked up to a TV, blah, blah, blah. This is the setup that I used when capturing some of the footage in the previous episode. I'll throw a card up there if you haven't watched it, where I explored Sonic 3 and Knuckles for Windows when Sega ported that game, well, those multiple games, to directly to the Windows platform. And there was a few sections in there where I needed to capture footage and audio from very specific levels for the purposes of showing how some of the songs in the Windows version of the game were different than those of the original hardware. Now, as fun as it would have been to play through the game and just capture that normally as I played through, I didn't have that kind of time. I really just needed a quick way to jump directly to those levels so that I could, you know, capture the footage I needed and then move on. And there exists a cheat code for Sonic 3 where you can get into uh, what they call sound test, but it's really a level select menu to jump straight to whatever level you want. And this is nothing new. A lot of the Sonic games had a very similar thing as well built in. And so I set out to pull that off. Now on the other games, at least Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, it's fairly straightforward to get into that. Sonic 3 though, for whatever reason, it's actually fairly difficult. This is a notoriously difficult thing to do the typical way that you would do it. And it involves hitting a sequence of buttons on the controller as the game is first starting up. And the timing on it is fairly tight. And that's not just timing as to when you start hitting the buttons, but also you have to hit within the frame windows of when those button presses can be accepted. You would normally start doing it right now. Basically as that Sega logo fades to black is when you would start doing the button presses. And what you do is up, up, down, down, up, 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 up really quickly. I'll try it here, but I don't think it's gonna work. So we do it right now. And if you do it right, you hear kind of a Sonic gets a ring kind of sound and you would have an extra option on the main menu. I, I didn't do it right. Either I didn't start at the right time or I didn't do it fast enough or maybe I didn't quite get one of the button presses in there because these controllers, the D-pad's a little on the mushy side. A anyway, so when I was going through and getting all that footage, I tried that method for something like 45 minutes and I just couldn't get it to work. And I didn't know why. It, maybe it had something to do with the capture setup and the way I have things plugged in and there might be a slight delay on this you know, TV versus a CRT or whatever that was screwing me up. So I had to research another solution. I just couldn't pull off that D-pad trick. What I ended up finding was actually a really interesting alternate option that kind of taught me something about the way this console works. The trick is you actually use a copy of Sonic 2 to kind of set the stage as it were to get to the level select screen that you need on Sonic 3. So let's kind of walk through the process. So I've got Sonic 2 fired up here and when we get to the main menu, I'm gonna go down past the second player option to this sound test menu or this options menu rather. And then you see, we've just got some basic options. This menu is here all the time on, on Sonic 2. But I'm gonna go down to the sound test menu and you need to play four specific sounds in the correct order in order to kind of set the stage for this trick, this hack, whatever to work. You need to play the numbers 19, 65, nine and 17. And as a bit of an Easter egg within an Easter egg, I guess, those numbers equate to the date September 17th, 1965, which happens to be Yuji Naka's birthday. He was one of like the developers and kind of programmers very involved in the original creation of the Sonic series. So it's, it's kind of a, I don't know, maybe it's a thing that he put in himself or somebody else put in and an homage of him, I'm not sure, but you got to put those numbers in and you have to 
Do them in, in that exact order, 1965, 917, and each of those will play a different song or sound from the game, and you have to let it play all the way through. At least so you can confirm that you've only hit each number once, because if you accidentally do one of those numbers twice, you have to completely start over again. So you can do left and right to increment by one, or you can press A to increment by a value of 10. And these codes are hexadecimal, so it's not just, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40. You've got the A, B, C, D, E, F going through there. So we're going to go 19. Sixty five, and then we'll cycle all the way through the sevens. Nine, and then seventeen. And as soon as you hit seventeen, you should get the sonic getting a ring sound effect as kind of a confirmation that you did it correctly. Now, after I do that, I'm going to have to move pretty quickly to pull off the other section of this trick. So I'll explain what's going on afterwards. But just we'll just do it. It's probably worth mentioning that uh, there is some risk of damage to your console if you do this or do this wrong. So um, use this trick at your own risk. And now, when we get to that main menu, if we go down one more, we've got that sound test option and the level select menu for Sonic 3, the one that's relatively difficult to get to by doing the up-down button trick with perfect timing at the, uh, the, you know, the very intro. You can pick any level. You can also do the same sound test trick over there where you can play arbitrary sounds. It works pretty much the same way. But how this works is actually fairly interesting, and that's kind of the point behind this video, is when you are in Sonic 2 and you're setting those sound test values, when you're playing those sounds, what you're actually doing is loading values into a specific address in the Genesis hardware's memory. Remember, video games work a lot like computer programs in that they need to write values that are pertinent to the way they work, into memory so that other parts of the game can read them, like how many rings Sonic has, or how many lives Sonic has left, or whether Sonic has a power-up or whatever. Those are all values that get written to very specific parts of memory. And those addresses are very well known as to what each of those is for. It's not like it's an arbitrary part of, of memory and it changes every time you play the game. It's always like this specific address and RAM is always for this value. And there are actually a lot of people who have gone through and figured out, especially on like 8-bit and 16-bit games, what all of those values are and how they work. They do this mostly for either speed running or doing ROM hacks. When you go into the sound test, what you're actually doing is loading the values that you're entering into RAM. But what's also interesting is Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 share the same memory address that triggers whether you're allowed to get into the level select menu. Because doing the same trick that we did in Sonic 2 with playing those four sounds, if you were to then go back to the main menu and hold down A and press start, it would take you to Sonic 2's level select menu. So that gets us to kind of interesting thing number two about how this, this hack, this trick works. And this is something I didn't really realize, but it actually leads to something really kind of curious that I had always been wondering about from when I was a kid, a specific occurrence. What I've discovered through this whole process is that when you press the reset button on a Genesis console, it actually keeps the contents of RAM. I always thought the reset button just acted kind of like the power switch where it would momentarily interrupt power. 
It turns out it doesn't. It actually just does a soft reset of some of the parts of like the motherboard in the console. So what I just did was I pulled out the cartridge for Sonic 2 and really quickly dropped in the cartridge for Sonic 3. It caused the game to crash, but it kept the contents of RAM. So all I had to do was hit the reset button and then Sonic 3, when it started up, already had those values in memory that told it it was allowed to show this level select menu, just as if I had done that up down button trick on the controller. Where this gets into this kind of memory from my youth, this is my original Model 1 Genesis from when I was a kid. I got it in like 1990 or 91 or something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly when, but one of the games that I also got with it was this one. It was called Target Earth. It's kind of a, a lesser known game, I guess. It's a, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of a side-scrolling shooter slash uh, platformer. And it was actually a fairly fun game. And I remember playing it as a kid and I got really far along in the game. But one of the later levels in it, there's a section where you can fall down into a pit that acts just like a soft lock. And this game doesn't have a timer or anything on it. So it's not like you could time out. There were no lives in this game. It was all based on an energy meter. So, you know, you would take hits and just the energy meter would go down. And when you hit zero, then the game would be over completely. So in a situation like that, where you've got a soft lock, there's no enemies, there's no timer, there are no lives, you have no choice. You're, you're, you are stuck there perpetually. And I was really bummed out about that, but I wanted to keep playing the game. So I ended up hitting the reset button at that point. The, the game Target Earth started back up, but instead of taking me to the original, like the very first level, it actually took me to the beginning of the level that I had gotten soft locked on, you know, much farther on in the game. Well, I think that's owed to this whole, you know, memory is persistent across resets thing because the game already had the value for what level I was on in RAM. And so when this game started back up, it would check to see, hey, you know, what level should I start at? And there was already a value in RAM saying level whatever it was. And so it just goes, oh, okay, I'll use that. Whereas otherwise that value would have been, you know, empty blank. And then the game would have assumed, oh, okay, this person is starting from the beginning. So that's just a really kind of curious quirk. I don't know if it was designed that way on purpose for this hardware or what, but it, it just goes to show that these, there's a lot of kind of intricacy into how video games are developed and how they integrate with the hardware and all of that. I just figured this was kind of an interesting, you know, maybe side diversion. This video has probably gone on way longer than it should have, but you know me, I, I just can't shut up. So hopefully you found this one interesting. If you ever want to get to the level select screen on Sonic 3 and you suck at mashing buttons just like I do, you have a copy of Sonic 2? Well, hey, there you go. I just saved you a bunch of time. Um, anyway, if you like this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.